everyone. Welcome back from the break. Uh, we're here at the Neurodiversity Matters Conference. Uh, our next segment is actually going to be introducing you to one of our founding company members, Dan Boyle, who's uh, sitting here with me. Um, what we'll do is we're going to play a video that Dan's recorded about uh, STE, and then it's a quick minute long video, and then we'll follow that up with uh, making him able to answer questions. So if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments on the Facebook feed and we will get them answered for you. All right. Hi, my name is Dan Boyle. I'm an artist. Administrative Associate and Secretary of the Board of Directors. As a person on the spectrum, I've faced challenges in my life, and being a member of Spectrum Theater has helped me to understand the challenges my peers face, both on and off the spectrum, and has helped me to face my own challenges. Being able to perform theater, I'm able to give myself a voice and give a voice to others. And being a member of Spectrum Theater has helps me to understand the challenges my peers face, both on and off the spectrum, it's and this helps me to face my own challenges. Being able to perform theater, I'm able to give myself a voice and give Sorry about that. We had a slight technical glitch, but uh, one so far in the day is no problem at all. So thank you, Dan, for that video um, and for all you've done with SCE. Uh, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Um, so, I mean, I just had a rehearsal for the upcoming Neurodiversity 10 Minute New Play Festival. So I'd say I, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's exciting to be doing work, you know? Fantastic. Well, so what role are you playing in this play? Uh, well, right now, this particular play, we don't have uh, a script fully designed yet. Um, what we're doing is we are doing discussions, going over you know the topic and finding out more about each other. And we'll have a, a, a script ready a couple of weeks, probably. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I know you're working on a bunch of new projects with the festival. Uh, tell me uh, maybe something you like about uh, any particular project or all of them, if you can think of a thing you, particular thing you like in each of them. Um, all right, so we're going to start with the big one, the one that will be right at the end of the festival, um, Importance of Being, A Plain Earnest by Jeremy Camps, our resident uh, playwright. Um, it's, a, it's a really good play. Um, We've developed it ourselves as a company. It has a, a lot of good things. I think the best thing about it is that it has more than one person on the spectrum with various abilities, disabilities, et cetera. And it gives a really good idea to the audience um, just how different um, a person, any person on the spectrum could be because let's face it, we have this thing where if you've seen one person with autism, you've seen one person with autism, you know? Awesome. And uh, if you, there was one reason why someone should uh, see the Neurodiversity Play Festival, what do you think that would be for you? Um, I would have to say, if you were to see this festival, you would, get a better understanding of people on the spectrum, people off the spectrum. Well, not, not off the spectrum, you get the idea. Um, but, you know, the, how people on the spectrum interact with their peers who are not on the spectrum and vice versa. And I think that's a very important thing to learn. Absolutely, thank you. Um, is there anything else? Uh, we've got a couple minutes. Uh, I know, um, you're actually, after our conference today, you have another program you're doing on Facebook Live. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so later on, um, I'm going to be working with Anna to discuss um, the um, communications um, 
so I'm I was actually just emailing her with that a little while ago because I hadn't kind of quite gotten the entire gist of it yet but um but yeah um yep it's gonna be fun though um and of course tomorrow um I will be monitoring two groups with uh, a couple of schools um that have theater programs about well not about but four people on the spectrum and how they can help to you know socialize people on the spectrum and help them learn different things you know great and we've got a little time and we actually got a question from facebook so let me ask you this how have you helped sd meetings adjust to social distancing i guess that's as sd as a whole and how can people interested get connected and involved with sd right okay so um as far as ST meetings go, uh, right now, social distancing literally, well, not that it doesn't apply, but because we are under lockdown for almost all the country, we're doing a lot of things by video conference like this. Um, so I have been helping to set up the videos um, and kind of helping to run the meetings and we're doing everything right now via video conference. Um, once we are able to, you know, meet again in person, obviously, you know, not just myself, but the, all, the whole company will be involved in helping to keep social distancing rules. Um, especially if we're able to have the conference, the not the conference, the um, the festival in person. Um, you know, we will we have let's just put it this way: we have plans for how we're going to do that. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Well, um, I think that is about wrapping up time, Dan. So thank you so much for yeah. uh, taking the time to share. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to see you again later today. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Keep safe. All right. We have just a couple minutes, and then we'll be into our next uh, program, which uh, piggybacks off that question of, about social distancing. We actually have a workshop uh, coming up next that is about using the viewpoints acting method uh, to teach social distancing skills. Uh, so that's a recorded video, lasts about 30 minutes or 20 minutes. Uh, and we will start that at three o'clock with a follow-up Q&A. And you know what, we have two minutes before we start and we're still live. So I'm going to take this time and just um, ask that if you're enjoying this conference and what we're providing, uh, SCE uh, is looking for support to uh, continue producing and developing our new play festival coming this summer. Uh, ways that you can support us and our work uh, is to go on to our Facebook page where we have an Autism Awareness Month fundraiser. Uh, and you can also check out our website, stensemble.org, uh, where you can donate through PayPal there. So uh, if you're interested and want to help us keep this programming going, please uh, feel free to do that. And thank you so much in advance. All right. Well, it is almost three o'clock. So I am going to go ahead and start our presentation of the next uh, program, which is a viewpoints workshop on skills for social distancing, led by Teddy Lytle with Daniel Perkins and Fallon Sousa, all SCE company members. Hi, welcome to Neurodiversity Matters Conference. This is using viewpoints for social distancing. Uh, viewpoints, Mary over at least 60 points to be specific, are uh, basic building blocks for devising theater and movement. Uh, the six viewpoints are space, shape, time, emotion, movement, and story. And we use these theatrical conventions 
in creating theater, but we feel that we can use these same building blocks uh, for helping with social distancing for a neurodiverse community. Uh, I'm Teddy Lytle. Hi, I'm Daya Perkins. And I'm Fallon Souza. Uh, and we're about to just offer some ideas in this trying time. Uh, so we'll start with space, spatial relationship. What is space? Well, in this regard, we're talking about the space between people uh, and the importance of being six feet apart. But how can we tell what is six feet apart? Um, there's uh, Dan standing up and uh, next to a fan and trying to stay six. Are you six feet apart from that? Feels like it. Uh, what are you, are you, uh, what are you doing to help, uh, let, uh, give yourself that reference that you're six feet apart? Well, I actually did this in January when I was learning, learning how to swim with the manatees using passive observation. The goal is to make sure you're six feet apart and to not approach them unless they approach you. But in this case, because it's social distancing, they're not going to come to you. So you're going to imagine yourself like, like the width of a manatee. From here to this band. Beautiful. Uh, Fallon, in your room, is there a piece of furniture that you think is about six feet apart from you? I kind of think that the coffee table is probably like six feet apart at an angle, maybe. I would say I, so. And what are you visualizing in between you and the table to help you do that? I'd say like a small car, like a VW Beetle, maybe. Beautiful, and that's that could sit sideways in between you and the table. It could park yeah. between you. I, would, I can visualize it. Um, very cool. Uh, well, and also I'm sitting in a chair. If I put this chair here and I stand here, I'm imagining I have a big lab named Digby, and I'm imagining two of him laying in between me and the chair. And so I can use two of my dogs in between me and all people at all times. So that's what I'm doing. Excellent. Next, we have Jessica. What are different ways you say hello? Well, Dan, I know you have a couple favorite ways of saying hello. Well, there's the usual air high five, or my personal favorite, and this is perfect if anyone ever has the flu, the air hug. But that the way. Air. Yes, well, because since as much as we love human connection, we can't touch each other right now. So um, as you heard Dan say, air hugs, air high fives, um, handshakes. What are other ways that we could uh, say hello to each other? Um, I think that using technology right now is a good way to say hello to people if you can't if you can't use physical connection to say hello to them also just like writing letters if you if it's someone that you that you Um, and so we were just going to offer kind of a free for all, um, you know, we can wave uh, and stuff, but we thought we'd come up with uh, some new ideas. Um, uh, I don't know, perhaps, yeah, 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 I like that, I like that. How could you come up with spatial gestures with your friends uh, that have significance? Um, and maintaining those important values that we get out of those connections. Uh, I like this too. This was fun. What was that? <laughs> Any other ones that didn't come into mind? Um, <laughs> yeah. Vogue. Vogue. Um, and now another thing that we have to deal with uh, is kinesthetic response. Now, kinesthetic response is things that happen to us or around us. And now we're naturally kind of built to uh, listen to our bodies, even if 
we need to be more active in listening to them and what we need and how we can take care of ourselves. But um, how do we respond when we sneeze or cough? Well, yes, this is the ideal now. But I know that even as a kid, I sometimes would just sneeze and let myself sneeze and send the germs out everywhere. Um, so how do we build up, you know, re-connecting uh, our neurons to, to uh, automatically respond in safe ways? Um, now, I think that is something that each of us individually just needs to practice being safe and doing. But how do we also then listen to other people's bodies and in response to that? So we have a role-playing scenario, imagining Fallon and Dan are in the same room, uh, and Dan goes for a hug. Hey, Fallon. Social distancing, sorry. How about okay. an air hug? Sure. There we go. See, we don't always have control over other people's bodies or their choices, but if they start coming into our space, especially in this time, we can always make sure that we vocalize our needs and offer alternatives as to not be uh, feeling like we're rude or um, causing any stress. Um, Thank you very much. Now, the last thing we have that we think uh, can offer uh, some help with us is repetition. Sometimes in scenarios where you have to go out and go to the store or be around strangers uh, in more constricted uh, spaces, um, you may not know how to respond to somebody, um, whether it is just a greeting or in sharing space. Um, so uh, one of the best things you can do in that uh, scenario is imitate or repeat what you see someone do. So if um, I was in the store, uh, and we'll go me, Dan Fallon, we remember this round, we have this round robin, guys, is uh, if I came across Dan, I might do this. And then if uh, Dan had another offering, Fallon. Now there is always this scenario. So sometimes when someone backs away from us, the best thing we can possibly do is back away from them. Um, so that was using viewpoints and social distancing for our neurodiverse community. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Fallon. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you guys had some fun. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Well, that was uh, using viewpoints and teaching social distancing. I'm Teddy Lytle. Uh, uh, I just want to thank first uh, um, Madison Weinhofer developed that workshop for us over in Germany, and. Um, uh, uh, so we were very excited to be able to share that uh, with all of you. Um, but just to do some follow up, there were some questions is, why do you use viewpoints uh, with people on the spectrum? Uh, now, I'm just a theater artist. I'm the community engagement director for Spectrum Theater Ensemble. But in my experience, um, I have found that viewpoints uh, is, you know, not just like I said, it's, it's a basic building block and uh, uh, foundational um, theatrical convention, um, but it's, it very specifically uh, defines and specifies sensory intake and uh, sensory interaction. Um, and uh, in my experience, I have found a lot of people uh, on the autistic spectrum uh, thrive with precise, clear direction. Um, so if you were to, if you wanted to look more into these viewpoints, my own experience is I studied theater and music undergrad at Muhlenberg College, where I had a little interaction with it. And I um, got my master's degree in acting at Brown University Trinity Rep program recently, where we had a whole year on viewpoints. And um, actually STE, our first project, uh, Spectrum Identity, Richard Brown came in and did a workshop with us. Um, uh, Mary Overly, created the six viewpoints, um, but then Anne Bogart uh, built off of that and developed the nine viewpoints. 
uh, and actually founded the City Company, which also does workshops. Um, uh, and uh, 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 plays utilizing the viewpoints heavily. Um, so I think viewpoints does work really well in th this scenario, but the fact of the matter is, is that theater in itself is rehearsal for social interactions. So there are varying uh, acting methods that can work for varying different people on and off the spectrum. Um, and so we have just found at the Spectrum Theater Ensemble, it's a language we commonly come back to, but it also is versatile enough for us to be able to accommodate everybody and how they wanna be heard and respond. Um, uh, and uh, you're welcome, Mary, thank you for, for watching us. Uh, uh, I don't see any more questions on the Facebook and I think now is a good time since we ran through, we'll probably take a break. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. We'll be coming back shortly with our next program, um, which I think is me again. So you'll be seeing me again very shortly. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. We really look forward to uh, keeping this going. Um, please continue asking questions. If they come up, we'll be sure to get to them as we can in, uh, in all of our sessions. Uh,